Hey everyone, welcome to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be taking another look at Zim Integrated Shipping Services, also known just by the ticker symbol Zim, Z-I-M. So first and foremost, thank you to everyone that liked and left a comment on my last video. I really appreciate it. Some of you had some great ideas and topics to touch upon, some of which I'm going to try to touch upon upon this video. Um, also, some people are complaining about the sound. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm trying something different now, so hopefully the sound is a little bit better. You might have some kind of ambient uh, background noise, but hopefully it'll just be louder so you can at least hear what I'm saying. But anyway, getting right into it. So, since the last time we spoke about Zim, it really hasn't moved a whole lot in terms of price, ironically. Um, it's up maybe slightly, uh, because we could see that we did, from the beginning of the of July, have this nice little move where we had been making higher highs, higher lows, and the stock price was gradually fighting its way back into the 50s, which was great to see. And then all of a sudden, it just, it just kind of collapsed. You could see at the, at the very end tail of the chart here. So what happened at the end of last week? Why did the stock all of a sudden go down? Was there any big news in terms of the economy or in terms of shipping or news of Zim itself? No, there wasn't. So why? Well, if you haven't guessed it, this is the answer. So last week, Jim Cramer had to uh, give us all his very sage advice and say that he'd be very careful with Sim. And he even said that he thinks that the stock price could be cut in half from where it is right now. Now, I'm sure all of you know uh, Kramer. He's been around forever. But um, maybe some of you uh, like Kramer, or maybe you don't. But keep in mind, whenever you would take any kind of financial advice from this guy. This is the same guy that said in 2008 that Bear Stearns was going to be fine maybe six weeks before the whole company went bankrupt. He also said that buying the Tesla IPO would be not a smart investment. This was the same guy. And even this year in January of 2022, Kramer was talking about how Meta was a great buy. Meta, you know, formerly known as Facebook, that was back in January. And so obviously the stock price has been nothing but crushed by then. But enough of my anti-Kramer rant. You all kind of get the picture. Or if you don't, you could uh, form your own opinion on the man and his advice. But needless to say, I don't... Uh, you know, I don't take his words to heart too much in terms of he's been right on certain things, he's been wrong on other things. I really don't know what uh, rationale he was using to make this opinion that he thinks Zim could be cut in half. It's particularly remarkable to me because, as we've said in the past, of course, Zim does have some some real risk to the stock in terms of recession fears, in terms of increasing energy prices, in terms of China lockdowns, etc. These are all very real, um, you know, circumstances that could really impact the stock price. But something I want to just tell all of you is that for what it's worth, Zim right now is trading at a price-to-earning ratio of just one. I'll say it again. It's trading at a P.E. ratio of one, which is the cheapest that the stock has ever traded in its history. Now, of course, Zim has not been around that long. It's only been around since January of 2021, so it's only been around about a year and a half. But... That being said, it's still trading at the cheapest that it's ever traded at a P.E. of just one. Now, to put that in perspective, some of Zim's competitors, such as Navios Maritime Partners, 
they have a P-E ratio of 1.3. And Danios, which I'll talk about a bit more later, they have a P-E ratio of 2.6. So we could see that in the industry, a P-E ratio of 1 is crazy low. It's super low. So keep that in mind when you're, you're thinking about how to value SIM. I also wanted to um, touch upon this other article I found. I thought this was some good news. For anyone that's been keeping up with Seeking Alpha, they have had a series of articles about Zim over the past few months. Most of them have been negative. Um, so the fact that now they have some positive things to say, or at least this one author, is uh, interesting. But I bring up this article for one reason in particular, which I thought was fascinating, although there's plenty of good information. But specifically, the article mentions the relationship between the Zim stock price and the Baltic Dry Index. So, as you could surmise, the higher the Baltic Dry Index is, the higher shipping rates are, the more money Zim is going to make. And so this chart is purporting to demonstrate that. And you can see it is a bit of a ratio. You know, you can see it's a bit of a delayed effect. And that's what this article is purporting, essentially, that there's about a four to six month lag between the Baltic Dry Index and Zim stock price. And so... If this lag continues, that would then mean that based on this um, bottom that we found in the uh, Baltic Dry Index at the end of January, if we fast forward, that means that Zim should be bottoming now towards the end of July. Just something to keep in mind. I think it's a useful metric. I don't have... Yeah, I don't have a, a ton of faith in it, only because, as we've said, this doesn't go back very far. You know what I mean? So this is something definitely worth looking at and considering that relationship. I'm going to be curious to see if that relationship continues to hold, which it very well may. But uh, I think we still need a, a little bit more information. But, I mean, as we've said before, also... People had commented last time to talk about kind of Zim's uh, business structure and it, the way it, its fleet is structured. And I do think it is worth mentioning that Zim does have 137 vessels in their fleet, but they only own a handful of those vessels. Most of those vessels, they uh, lend out to the secondhand market to complement their own capacity and furthermore, Zim is continuing to build. So in the first quarter of 2022, Zim entered into charter agreements for 17 new builds. So that's always good to see that the company is growing or expanding their fleet. They see opportunities still. And another thing is that, you know, private investors like you or me or even hedge funds aren't the only ones that are interested in Zim. Even other shipping companies, so Danios, who we mentioned just a few moments ago, they have a big stake in Zim, which, you know, is good news. Um, so they right now own 6.1% of the company, which is a large stake considering. And, uh, you know, also what I find positive is some of these other uh, top holders for Zim. So we have, of course, Deutsche Bank, like, okay, good and well. Renaissance Technology, this just kind of caught my eye because Renaissance has, you know, one of the longest, their medallion fund, I believe to this day, is still the best performing of any fund in Wall Street, etc. So that's good news. But, you know, as we're saying, other shipping companies even are trying to get into Zim and get a piece of this action. And we'll see. You know, they paid their last dividend in June. 
I would be curious to see what happens before their next dividend payment to see if we see a bit of a, a repeat of what happened last time where all this money was flooding into the stock uh, ahead of the ex-dividend date to try to get a piece of that dividend action. Eventually, it simmered down, but I'd be curious to see if we have another similar run-up. Um, but anyway, let me know what you think. None of this is financial advice. It's just for entertainment purposes, but I'm really curious what happens to Zim. Let me know if you think it's going to go up, if it's going to go down, if it's going to trade sideways. Um, and I'll do more videos on Zim because there appears to be an interest and I have a ton more information to go over. So let me know if you'd like me to. Um, and if so, I'll catch you in the next one.